Hi, I am Dr. Khurram Shaukat Yusufzai. Today's video is about maintenance and health and safety plan of hyperbaric chamber. Hyperbaric chamber needs monthly maintenance because if you don't do it, there can be disastrous consequences of not maintaining a hyperbaric chamber. So hyperbaric health and safety course is offered by me in order to tell you about these seven things, how to maintain the hyperbaric chamber, how to keep the record from where to maintain and how to safely operate and what to do in emergency, natural disasters, man-made or natural. Mono hyperbaric chambers health and safety course is based on a knowledge base of many sources which I have enumerated here and this is the proud presentation of KSY hyperbarics. Today I'm going to tell you what will happen if the hyperbaric chamber is operated by untrained people which is really happening all over the world and if the hyperbaric chamber is run by untrained people a disaster can happen. So the mono hyperbaric chamber is made up of steel and a glass like material called acrylic like what you see here. So this chamber is good for the commercial use and people can use it in their clinics and also their homes if they can afford it because it's an expensive piece of machinery. The other is PU monoplace medical hyperbaric chamber polyurethrene and this is actually used for home for one particular person who would use it at home so this is good for the home but not for the clinic because if you use it in the clinic it can cause problem this kind of medical chamber can operate max up to one bar and the acrylic and the steel one max up to two bar and some of them use pure oxygen for compression that can be dangerous. But the modern ones are using air to compress the hyperbaric chamber which only contains 21% oxygen and they're pretty safe. But even those chambers are prone to explode if operated by non-trained people. This soft polyurethrene hyperbaric chamber is offered in many shapes like the one you see here. Some of them are restricted to 1.3, some to 1.4, and rare ones are for 1.5 atmosphere. Like the pressure coming from the compressor is 0.5 bar, but actually the uh, pressure is 1.5 atmosphere. So that's the max they can operate. The disastrous consequences of operation of these kind of hyperbaric chambers the polyurethrene or soft one by unprofessional, untrained people is disastrous. It can cause disaster and maybe loss of human life. Although, you know, these chambers are less than 1.5 atmosphere. Majority of them are 1.3 or 1.4. And they're restricted because of the same reason so that people don't kill themselves. As you can see, these chambers can explode. You can see the shock of the guy when his chamber exploded and he's alive but probably he's injured because the explosive decompression sickness can cause injury and death. Usually the human being can survive a one atmosphere or one, up to 1.5 atmosphere uh, decompression, explosive decompression like this one. But if the explosive decompression is uh, up to 9 atmosphere, deaths have been reported in 1984 on an oil rig when professional divers, they died. So the medical chambers can operate max up to 2 atmosphere. So 2 atmosphere is also dangerous, but below 1.5, it is sort of less dangerous. And that is the reason for restriction of these polyurethrene soft chambers to that pressures. 
but to operate the chamber without the professional people who are not trained in how to maintain it, how to uh, perform the health and safety uh, checklist, how to operate it. Because as you see, this looks like being operated by non-professional people like servants. And the guy had a mobile phone uh, in his hand, as you would see that he's still on his mobile while he was inside using the mobile and now he's using his mobile maybe the mobile was one of the reason of the explosion of uh, this hyperbaric chamber because electronic devices they can be a uh, cause of electrostatic electricity or electrical currents that can cause an explosion and this guy <laughs> lucky that he's alive and he's still uh, busy with his uh, mobile, maybe sending a message to somebody uh, to explain his uh, explosion to his girlfriend or whoever. But you know, like operating this chamber by non-professional people and putting them in gyms and in, in your homes and not being trained and not understanding the dynamics is like exposing yourself to accidents like this one and this is the reason i'm offering this course where i would uh, train the people and they would understand how not to run the hyperbaric chamber and what are the sop standard operating procedures how to maintain the logbook how to maintain it and from where to maintain it and how to confirm to the international standards and not be careless with your life because the hyperbaric chambers like any other machine or device like your car if you're not careful you can kill yourself or injure yourself because I would explain the effects of explosive decompression uh, which have occurred uh, for in people to people who are in aircraft or hyperbaric chamber or in the spacecraft majority of the cases are in the aircraft and then spacecraft very very few are in the hyperbaric chamber they are the safest but hyperbaric chamber can also become deadly if it is filled with oxygen this one is an air compressed hyperbaric chamber which is relatively safe and that's why this guy is alive but the old uh, hyperbaric chambers they would use pure oxygen which is 100% oxygen to uh, operate and the old chambers were pretty dangerous and the old pure oxygen chamber would actually uh, cause even fire this one luckily didn't catch fire because it was filled with air which had relatively less oxygen maybe 20 to 30% because when the air is compressed, the percentage of oxygen also increase. Like in the multi-hyperbaric chamber, the percentage of uh, oxygen is controlled and that's why they are more safe. But in these chambers, there are no uh, health and safety uh, measures or sensors because they are just basic or classic hyperbaric chamber with, with just a pressure controlling valve and a compressor so they don't have a lot of uh, health and safety measures although this one was having air compression not the oxygen compression but still this guy did something wrong which caused the hyperbaric chamber to explain to explode and the people around him were also probably servants or untrained non-professional people and this is not what you should be doing uh, so i can help and give you the training how to operate it how to be safe and what to do and what not to do sometimes you know the windows of such chamber also give away and they can cause explosive decompression such things can also happen in the aircraft like in the aviation industry in the aircraft majority of the cases of explosive and uncontrolled decompression is either uh, in an aircraft cabin or a hyperbaric chamber that typically results from the human error structure failure or impact 
So there are three types like explosive decompression, rapid decompression, slow or gradual decompression. The term uncontrollable decompression here is referring to unplanned depressurization of the vessel which was pressurized. So aircraft and spacecraft and hyperbaric chamber are the usual. Hyperbaric chamber is the safest although it happens a lot in the aircrafts and the spacecrafts. Explosive decompression occurs typically in less than 0.1 to 0.5 second and rapid decompression occurs in more than 0.1 to 0.5 second. In the explosive decompression, the lung cannot adjust to the uh, rapid explosive decompression and is damaged. In the rapid decompression, the lung can adjust because the time is more than 0.1 or 0.5 seconds. So these are the effects of the explosive decompression like hypoxia, barotrauma, decompression sickness, altitude sickness, frostbite, etc. or physical trauma. You know, the freezing happens in the aircrafts but not in the hyperbaric chamber. And you know, the damage which occurs are usually to the uh, lungs, to the eardrums and the sinuses. Many movies have uh, shown the dramatic scenes, but they are not correct. So barotrauma, as you can see, damages the eyes as well. So the eyes, the sinuses and the eardrums and especially the internal ear can also be damaged. But at 1.3, uh, the skin can uh, take it and but the other organs maybe it can it cannot depends so uh, the teeth the genitals skin eyes lungs pressurized sinuses middle ear everything can be affected diagnosis is usually done by lab and uh, by x-rays so creatinine kinase complete blood co count and arterial blood gases should be taken immediately uh, after the blast and the ear should be checked also, the inner ear should be checked. The inner ear uh, can be checked by ENT surgeon or by radiography, CT scan, echocardiography. And in the middle ear, uh, barotrauma, the person also loses the balance and the equilibrium and he would have problem. But the doctor can diagnose, is it because of decompression sickness or is it because of uh, explosive decompression? Usually in the explosive one, conductive deafness is more prominent and in the uh, decompression sickness, the sensorineural hearing loss is more prominent. I hope you enjoyed my video. I want you to like my video and also subscribe to my channel for such informative videos about hyperbaric medicine which is very rare and I'm one of the very few doctors in the world who is trying to explain about hyperbaric medicine which is completely new. So I hope you subscribe to my channel. Take care. Goodbye. See you soon.